Hello again, I am Blunty, and following on in this series of videos about the handy dandy techie tips and secret knowledges about the game streaming, game recording, and the like, we've already looked at a useful budget friendly hardware build for a capture rig. We've explored and tested CPU versus GPU encoding, and today we're on the other side of the quality equation that is, balancing your video bit rates and your resolution and your frame rate for streaming and recording. And as per usual, I'm all about show, not just tell so you can see for yourself the difference it makes the first thing you need to know is your upload speed on your connection to find this you can use a tool like speedtest.net which will tell you your real world upload speed which may and probably will let's face it differ from what your service provider tells you it is thanks to things like signal quality and network congestion and frankly just isps flat out lying once you have this number, it's good practice to set up your streaming software, OBS, XSplit, whatever you're using, to use around about 80% of the speed as your streaming bitrate. That makes sure you've got some overhead for your other bits and pieces to squirt out data when they need to. Now that you have that number, your upload speed will also dictate the kind of resolution and frame rate you can stream at in an acceptable quality. I've done a whole bunch of testing here using a pre-recorded 4K super high bitrate video file of three different games as my source for these tests so we can get some nice consistent comparisons. I've got some Enter the Gungeon for some crispy pixel love. I've got some Islands, currently in early access, for some bright gaming with big chunks of smooth solid colours. And for our high detail high motion game, some GTA V. I'm using three different kinds of video games because different kinds of video compress differently. The more motion there is, the more fine detail there is, the more likely it is that aggressive video compression will crush it out and make it look a bit ugly, so keep that in mind. You may in fact want to use different settings for different games when you're streaming. And the settings I'm showing you here should be a great starting point for a very broad variety of games. But sometimes you may indeed find it better to go for a lower resolution, but use a higher bitrate to keep things crisper. Like, for example, streaming at 720p 30 frames per second, but using the suggested bitrate I've shown here for a 60 frames per second stream. The same upload data rate now has half the amount of frames to squeeze in per second, which will get you a crisper image for more difficult to compress high detail, fast moving stuff. When I started out streaming, I had a very ordinary and crappy Aussie internet connection, so I spurted out a 360p or sometimes 480p stream. And while of course it's very desirable to have a higher resolution as possible, so your stuff looks the nicest, you will find that so long as your stream is entertaining to watch, the audience won't care that much if you are stuck at a less than ideal sub HD resolution. And you also have to remember, a fair whack of your audience will be watching you in a window on their desktop next to whatever else they're doing, or on their phone or tablet, so don't feel so hard done by if you're not as lucky as I am now with my current fat upload speeds. Only a relatively small portion of your audience is actually watching you, full screen, in the highest quality possible. In fact, audio quality is actually much more important than resolution when it comes to keeping viewers around. People will cope with a video that looks a bit muddy, but if your audio sounds just ear-piercingly terrible, they aren't going to stick around. And of course, in an upcoming video, I'll be looking to that side of things too, of course, so stay tuned. Also useful to keep in mind, even if you've got plenty of bandwidth, is if a 60 frames per second stream is even worth it for the specific game you're playing on that stream. No point streaming out at 60 frames per second unless the game you're playing actually runs at 60 frames per second and watching at 60 frames per second is a worthwhile thing for your viewers also. A lot of the time, 60 frames per second is very desirable in the play of the game. It makes it feel much better to play, but for viewing, 30 frames per second may indeed be absolutely fine. Now, when it comes to recording locally, either alongside your stream or for dedicated purposes for things like game reviews and let's plays and tutorials and all that kind of content, you're obviously no longer restricted by your upload rate. Now, you can unleash the mighty power of higher bit rates for much, much higher quality. And now, the balancing act becomes about how much disk space you're using up. And that is why, when I put together that custom recording streaming rig for this series of videos, I went with that big, fat Seagate Barracuda Pro 4TB drive. I'll be taking another look at the subject of disk space and recording in its own video too, where we will be stretching into 1440p and 4K content as well. But for now, 1080p, 60 frames per second, which is by far the most useful place to live for those wanting to create pre-recorded gaming content for YouTube and such. 
I, personally, go with around a 50 megabits per second rate for this stuff. And what you're seeing here is some comparisons between a disk space sipping 10 megabits per second choice, a balanced 30 megabits per second setting, and a 60 megabits per second choice, which is where you really hit the point of diminishing returns, by the way. You can go higher than 60, but frankly, you're just going to eat up way more disk space than you need, and the image quality won't appreciably improve especially not once you actually upload it to YouTube and they recompress everything for you anyway. As it stands, the 10 megabits per second option will eat up around 4.5 gigabytes of disk space per hour recorded. The 30 megabytes per second will chew through around 13 and a half gigabytes per hour. And the 60 megabits per second will want just shy of 28 gigabytes an hour. Or, in terms of that 4 terabyte drive I recommended, assuming you use it for nothing else but recording, no game installs or anything else, at the 60 megabits per second recording setting, you will get about 140 hours worth of recording, or about 2.5 hours of recording a day for the year. That is, of course, assuming your final edited videos are saved somewhere else as well, of course. And it just so happens that for people who make edited game videos, about two and a half hours of raw gameplay is a useful average used for a nice, well-paced, heavily edited video. What that means, in practical terms, is that if you're someone wanting to make YouTube gaming content, the 4TB drive I recommended is indeed an ideal place to be so you don't have to spend a whole bunch of time fairly frequently moving files around all the time. But there you are. Hopefully that's given you some useful insight into bit rates and resolutions and frame rates and how to use them and when to use them and why to use them. Thanks for watching. I am Blunty and I will catch you next time.